you saw the video on how international open market operations are conducted, I pointed out that the central bank, to change the money supply in the economy, we really think of the private economy. And that includes kind of two markets. I mean, it includes much, a whole lot of things. It includes many, many more markets. But there's kind of a domestic money market that determines the interest rate. And there's also a foreign exchange market. There's one with interest rates, and there's one with a supply and demand that determines the value of our currency. There's another one with interest rates. So, sometimes the central bank would like to sterilize one economy from the other. What is sterilization? What does it mean when you sterilize a wound? You keep it protected from the outside, right? So if you cut your arm and you need to sterilize it, you clean it, and then you do something to keep it sterile and protected from the outside environment. So it'd be kind of nice if maybe they could do some actions here to influence the interest rate and some other actions over here to influence the exchange rate and somehow sterilize one from the other. To make it clear, instead of keeping it all over here, I'm going to break the private economy into two. I'm going to put this one over here. That's going to be the domestic money market. And I'm going to take this one over here and make it the Forex market. And we'll look at that in just a second. So, here we go. We have the Forex market over here. Don't forget these are both part of the private economy and this isn't. And now let's see if the central bank could, let's say, sell euros over to here, which would get rid of some of their reserves, and they would bring money this way. This effect in the Forex market would decrease the supply of money, raising the value of the domestic currency because there's less of it available. An increase in V, which is 1 over E, means a decrease in the exchange rate, which is an increase in the value of the domestic currency. So they could achieve their objective here, and then they could come over here. The problem is this act lowers the amount of money. This is the, the money supply. It is a lowering of the money supply in the, in the economy. So effectively over here, this, this, the money supply and increase the interest rate. So they go over here and say, why don't we buy a bond? And when we buy the bond, it will put money into the economy over here. So this increase in the money supply lower interest rates. So this increase in M can offset this decrease in M and make this decrease in the interest rate offset the increase we got over there and undo the effects domestically. Central banks try to do this all the time. Very often they'll go out and do quite the opposite and try to buy international currency to stock up their reserves and then undo its effect in the domestic markets. Notice it fundamentally fails because what else? Remember the 4x 
and the domestic money market are both part of the same private economy, which is where we started. So this act also increases the money supply back here and it lowers back this back to where it was. So it ultimately fails. If they wanted to buy international currency and that and stock up on reserves, they would have done the opposite. So this is what would happen in the case where they try to stock up on reserves. Very often central banks will try to build a stock of reserves. In doing that, they're buying foreign currency out of the global market. That act increases their money supply, pushing it out into the market, decreasing the value of their currency. The value of the currency is one over the exchange rate, so increasing the exchange rate. To undo it, they sell a bond in the domestic market, which pulls money out of the domestic market, and that would push interest rates up over here. The problem, unfortunately, is this decrease in the money supply pulls this back over, and that increase in the money supply here pushes this back so that the interest rate comes back down to here and this comes back up to here. Interestingly, the effect is that they get to the original value of their currency and they get back to the original interest rate. So notice doing this sterilization in the end didn't affect the exchange rate and didn't affect the interest rate, but it did change and they got rid of some bonds and increased foreign uh, reserves. So it did succeed in that terms of sterilization. They now have more reserves without an influence on exchange rates or domestic interest rates. In this regard, sterilization works. It doesn't work if you try to influence the exchange rate without affecting the interest rate or influence the interest rate without affecting the exchange rate. Those things cannot be sterilized from each other. But if you just want to buy, buy reserves without affecting either, you can use sterilization. One last comment. In the example I'm giving, um, the central bank bought currency. In reality, it does buy some currency, but usually it buys euro-denominated bonds or foreign currency bonds. Let's call them B-star and it trades domestic currency bonds. So if those two are not perfect substitutes for one another, then there is a little bit of room um, to sterilize there as well. Not a lot, but there is some, and we'll cover that in part two um, a little later.